everyone, and welcome back to Practically Zero Waste, a podcast about making zero waste living as practical as possible. Jess Morales, who we've had on the show before, had lots to say about her experience with traveling light and producing minimal waste, even on family vacations. Today's episode includes clips from our conversation, as well as some compiled tips and tricks for trying to reduce your waste while still seeing the world. My husband and I, and our fresh new baby, who's due in November, will hopefully be flying out to a friend's wedding in Winnipeg, Manitoba. This will be our first trip together since becoming more eco-conscious. Traveling often makes us think of the adorably small versions of our regular toiletry products in the drugstore. Tiny sunscreen and toothpaste that we can buy every time we're going on a trip. Now that you're looking for ways to reduce the amount of garbage you produce, it's not only important to rethink these toiletry options, but to rethink what you're packing, where you'll be staying, and what you'll be doing when you travel in general. So let's take some baby steps here with a few tips I've compiled from many zero wasters like Catherine from Going Zero Waste and Lauren from Trashes for Tossers, as well as a few from my own brain as well. I have a quote from Trashes for Tossers. Living your best zero waste life is about realizing that not every industry is perfect, but it's about doing what you can within restrictions to lessen your environmental impact. So let's talk about some main different sections in travel. We have flying, clothing, what to pack, toiletries, accommodations, and reusable items that we can bring along with us. I have a list here because I love making lists of what to do for each of these different categories. For flying, it's important to think about, if possible, booking a direct flight to minimize your carbon emissions. Every time you take off and land in a plane, it produces more carbon emissions. So if you can book direct flights rather than having multiple stopovers, this would help. It's hard to get around flying if you want to see the world, especially different continents, but that's why we're talking about all the other zero waste habits we can adopt as well. Next one is go digital with your boarding passes. It's so easy nowadays to have all of the info on your phone and check in digitally when you arrive. Number three, pack everything in a carry-on to skip the temptation of overpacking a checked baggage item. We'll be working very hard to keep our baggage to a minimum when we go to Manitoba, but we are going to be taking a baby. And at this point as new parents, I'll admit, we don't really know what that will entail. Luckily, we'll have some time after it's born to see how much we actually need to pack. For the actual flight, pack snacks, bring an empty water bottle and refill it once you've got past security. And when you're on the flight, try to refuse napkins, straws, plastic cups, blankets wrapped in plastic if you have an overnight flight, plastic cutlery, and lots and lots of other single use items that they have on the plane. Some of your food may have to come, especially if you're in an overnight flight, some of your food may have to come in packaging. Do the best that you can and avoid all the simple things that you already know how to avoid because you bring a to-go bag full of all of your awesome reusables. The next section is clothing. When you're packing clothing, try and pack lightly and also try to wear your bulkiest stuff on the plane ride. Now, we'll be traveling to Winnipeg in January, so as you can imagine, it'll be cold, like really cold. We'll also be attending a wedding, so we'll want formal clothes, and we'll also have a brand new baby, so we'll want changes of clothes for it. Luckily, we'll be going from cold weather to cold weather, so we won't have to pack our bulky stuff. We'll already be wearing it. As much as possible, try to pack items that are dual purpose or multi-purpose, like a scarf that you can fold up and use as a pillow on the plane, a swaddle blanket can be a nursing cover, a burp cloth, and wipes all in one, anything that you're going to get multiple days of use out of, even clothing like a sweater or a pair of jeans, wearing those items as much as possible over your trip will make it easier and you can pack less. Pick clothes that work really well together in any combination so you pack less and wear them more, just like the sweater and the jeans. For this trip to Manitoba, I'm expecting to pack a pair of jeans for the entire four day weekend to be worn at all times unless I'm sleeping or at the wedding. I'll pack one hefty sweater and a couple of shirts along with our wedding clothes. For toiletries, number one, you can say no to buying travel-sized anything. Instead, pack what you already use in smaller bottles or containers. If you must buy a new toiletry product, try to buy it in a large bulk container that then you can transfer the small amount that you actually need into a smaller container. Especially if you're just using a carry-on, it's important to pack things that are not liquid (laughs) or within the the liquid standards for carry-on flights. If you're packing simply a carry-on bag, you will have to buy a new razor blade for your reusable razor if you have a stainless steel one once you arrive at your location. The other alternative is if you are doing a checked bag, you can pack them there or just skip shaving for the time that you'll be traveling. If it's just a weekend or a week or however long you're willing to go. Next is shampoo bars. Shampoo bars can be dual purpose for both hair and body while you travel and it skips the potentially wasteful situation 
of having a bottle that contains too much liquid at security and being forced to throw it out. Lastly, in case of your period, bring a menstrual cup and a few waterproof cloth pads that could be washed in the sink if necessary. The next section is accommodations. It's likely that you'll know where you're staying when you go on a trip, but try and be mindful about where you're picking to stay. So try to pick accommodations that offer kitchens or laundry access like an Airbnb or a hostel. If you do have access to a kitchen, try to scout out grocery stores that are nearby and offer package-free fruits, veggies, breads, grains, etc. In Canada and the US, we have Bia Johnson's Bulk Locator app for finding bulk stores near you. But if you don't have access to bulk, you can always buy food in reusable or recyclable packaging and try and compost your food scraps. I've heard of asking your Airbnb uh, if they compost or if they have anybody locally who you could drop your compost off to. Or you can use something like the Share Waste app, which you can find depending on the country that you're in, to find a home for your compost. Remember, it only takes a few minutes to shop mindfully and plastic free, even while traveling somewhere new. If you don't have access to laundry and need to wash a few items, use your bathroom sink or your shower. Some soap tins or containers where you carry your bar of soap come with a ridged bottom to hold the soap out of the water that drips. This can be used like a washboard and to clean tougher things by hand in the sink. When we go on our trip, we'll be staying with friends when we travel, which means we'll be carpooling and getting around together with them. But you could try to use transit, carpool, rent bikes, take an Uber, walk as much as you can, or choose an eco-friendly car rental, whatever that means to you. There are lots of ways to try and minimize your carbon emissions once you arrive at your destination, despite having to take a plane to get there. Finally, never leave home without your zero waste to go kit, and you wouldn't want to leave home on a trip without it either. This is my list of reusable items that I like to bring every time I'm traveling somewhere, even if it's just a weekend trip or if I'm going on a plane. I bring a reusable water bottle that I can fill up, and often when I've been on the plane before, the person with the trolley will refill my stainless steel water bottle directly from their large pitcher of water that they use, and so I don't have to use a plastic cup at all. The same goes for using a to-go cup or a travel mug and if you drink tea bring a tea infuser and then if you already are packing your own tea leaves then you can just get hot water on a plane or you can just ask for your coffee to be put right into your to-go cup. Something else really useful is a stainless steel or sturdy plastic or glass container that's large enough that you can get takeout in or use to store snacks on the plane or use when you're going out for the day and you might be getting takeout food. With your to-go container you'll want to bring reusable cutlery. Double check if you can bring metal butter knives on a plane. I don't imagine that you can uh, because you can't even bring nail clippers on a plane but if you can then that's perfect if not look into getting a set of bamboo utensils or just stopping at a secondhand store once you get to your location and picking up some cutlery for your day-to-day -day use. You might want a cloth napkin or a handkerchief. I use a handkerchief to blow my nose. I also use one to wrap things up in if I'm taking any food to go. I also use it just as a regular napkin for wiping my hands. Rather than using a wet wipe you can just get your napkin, wet it in your water bottle and then you'll have a wet wipe and it works perfect. Another thing to consider bringing with you is a cloth reusable bag or a couple of them and that way if you find a bulk store or if you find any place that sells things in bulk you're able to put your produce in there or your dry goods in there your snacks anything that you find or anything that you want to take to go with you you can use a cloth reusable bag if you don't want to use a container and finally a canvas tote bag or a backpack that you can use to carry anything from your groceries home to your airbnb or your supplies for a day outing that's enough of just me, let's get on to our bonus clips on travel with Jess Morales from Baby Steps to Zero Waste. We've done a lot of travel uh, with our kids and you know when you bring a little kid on the airplane they have like a little gift pack um, oh, for them a lot nice. of the times yeah. and the first time we went on a plane you know we were so prepared we had Skyla's little uh, a little tin filled with crayons and you know little toys a play-doh like all these things for her to keep keep entertained on the plane and then the minute we stepped on the airplane a hostess handed her a packaged little bag filled with whatever balloon and things like that and Honestly, I did not have the heart to say, oh, sorry, she can't have this. Because when somebody hands your two-year-old a present like that, yeah. it becomes more important to avoid an epic tantrum as people are trying to board the plane yeah. than, than refusing it, you know? Exactly. <laughs> I did not want to be that parent. <laughs> so, But, I mean, the next time we went on the plane, 
I was a little bit more prepared. We, me and Skyla talked about it. We're like, oh, you know, we already prepared. She got to choose what she put in her little, like her little trousseau that we brought on the plane. She chose all her things that she wanted to bring. We said, we don't need anything in that little thing. So you can say no. And we, we gave her the choice to say no, that she doesn't need it. And, and she did actually, I was very surprised, but she actually did say, no, no, I have my things. And that's so sweet. It was, yeah, it was really good, you know, and that it's it's hard for other people to accept. No, they're like, are you sure? And they did offer it a few times, like during our our thing, but we were like, no, no, we're fine. We were more prepared, so we could we could say no. I don't think we did. We miss anything that you were hoping we would talk about? Anything you want to add? Um, just browse through. Oh, oh, well, traveling is also another big one on my yeah. Page. I don't think we talked too, too much about that. But. No, just a plane ride. But you, you went to mm, some beach recently. Well, <laughs> Instagram's well, weird. Done, uh, all kinds of trips. I mean, we're huge yeah. travelers. Yeah. So we spent two months in Australia. That was our most recent really huge trip. Wow. Um, a lot of it was road tripping. So, and we managed to do it low waste. So, I mean, that's that was quite a challenge that's in amazing. some ways. We had two little kids with us, and we were on the road and in a in a different country. Luckily, it was Australia, and they actually do have a lot of like you can look on your phone and find the bulk stores. So, yeah. and I brought my cloth bags. We also were trying to pack minimalist, so we only brought like one big backpack for all four of us. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> so, I know, I just like to make my life hard sometimes. But honestly, <laughs> it's much easier to travel with children if you don't have so much stuff to carry. Yeah. Because, I mean, half the time you have to carry the kids too. So um, <laughs> we just try and try and try and travel really light. And sometimes that can be hard when you're doing zero waste because zero waste also involves bringing a lot of stuff it can, <laughs> with yeah. you. Which is why I get when people want to do like the bamboo or the tiffins or anything like mm. that because they're meant to be lightweight. I know that like mm-hmm. when I bring my travel mug places, it's really heavy ceramic and it's kind of a pain. So like mm-hmm. um, I get it wanting to make pack. Sense to bring a million jars with you like that. Like yeah. it, it's too heavy and you know. Yes, we got cloth bags. <laughs> but, That's smart. Yeah. So we did use our, you know, our small stainless steel tiffins and a lot of the things we did buy some things in like glass jars and stuff, which we reused the jars afterwards and then got them filled at the bulk store. So we didn't have to bring all those things. And then in the end of our trip, we found a lady at the farmer's market who takes in people's jars and fills them with her preserves and her salsas and her everything. So, I mean, we were able to even give her all of our jars at the end of our trip before we went home. It was, it was really amazing. Um, We also used the share waste app. Okay. So this is a, an app that connects people with compost with people who need to put stuff in a compost. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So that was really amazing because uh, like one of the big wastes is food waste. Even if you do really well, I mean, you don't really eat the melon rinds and stuff, you know, so, like these were all yeah. things that had to go in a compost. Um, we were able to keep it and then connect with people along our journey. We'd always, I'd always look ahead of time and see if there was a compost available. And there's a whole bunch listed, you know, uh, in community gardens and in people's personal gardens. And I came to their house and I emptied my compost in it. And it was, it was actually really awesome. Um, so the share waste app was really useful while traveling. And, you know, I think when people have kids, they really overpack a lot of the times yeah. because they, they just want everything, but kids don't really need all that much stuff. Yeah. You know, we didn't even bring toys really. We brought their favorite blanket and their favorite stuffed animal. And that was like basically it, you know, they played with acorns and yeah. grass and flowers and <laughs> bugs and they didn't need much, you know, yeah. people are always worried. How do you do it with kids? But kids don't actually need that much yeah was it <laughs> hard cloth diapering to remember. sorry was it hard to cloth diaper while you were traveling or was it about the same well so for that was one thing that we didn't do when we oh, okay. went to australia That's fine. <laughs> um so yeah i mean i did contemplate it much to my husband's dismay that i even thought about bringing it but the cloth diapers they're quite big and bulky you know, so half of our backpack space would be cloth diapers. And since we were road tripping it, we wouldn't, and moving pretty often, we wouldn't have any way to wash them. 
Yeah. You know, so what yeah. we did instead was we bought the most eco-friendly disposable diapers we could find. And then we we just upped our game with the elimination communication that we did. Max was in diapers at that time, but he basically used maybe one disposable diaper a day because we we were getting really good at reading his signs. And so he would stay in a clean diaper like all day. That's amazing. Um, so elimination communication it did really help us reduce our diaper usage. And then in other places that we stayed, um, like when I went to St. Martin, we did an Airbnb thing. So we had a washing machine and I did, and we would be mostly at the beach where I leave my kids you know, totally free to the air when we're at the beach. Yeah. Um, So they didn't use so many cloth diapers even. um, And we were able to wash what we had. And we were only going for a week and, you know, we had the room to bring our cloth diapers. So sometimes Mm -hmm. I do do it if it makes sense. But at the same time, I'm not going to kill myself trying to hand wash cloth diapers and and then find some way to get them dried in time for when we leave because you can't pack wet diapers and like... Yeah, that would have been way more stressful yeah you know like some sometimes I just have to swallow the losses and be like this is really impractical (laughs) but we try what we can you know so for us we just we upped our elimination game and it was really great because we got our our son um potty trained super early I mean he was like 20 months and in underwear full time. It's amazing. So because we were really committed to doing elimination communication he learned a lot about it too and he became aware of himself really early and then he totally you know a lot of kids are in diapers for maybe even more a year or two longer than him so if we had to bring some disposables while on vacation I think it balances out a little bit (laughs) yeah and you put so much effort into all the other parts of um eliminating your waste that like you can you can feel okay about using some Mm-hmm. I mean, like, I mean, it's still bitter because you don't want to be do you want to do your best. And sometimes you feel like, is this really my best? But I mean, sometimes it is. <laughs> Did you use cloth pads at all? Or like a menstrual cup? I don't know if that's too much. information. I used it. No, no, I de- the menstrual cup is like the best change, and I wish I did it earlier. <laughs> Honestly, we didn't talk about that. But yeah, that's what I did when I was traveling. So we I pretty much exclusively used my my menstrual cup I didn't yeah. even bring any cloth pad. I do have some but I yeah. I didn't even bring any I just brought my cup and uh, the first time I ever used my cup it was uh, it was right before I was going on a six week, a five week trip to Greece oh, so of course how inconvenient like I had to my first time using the cup was like in an airplane bathroom Aww. I was like oh my god this is horrible <laughs> honestly it actually wasn't horrible in the end and it was made things so much easier I had so much less to pack yeah you know I was like and you know what I had no choice because I was like well this is the we have one bag for the four of us and this is the only thing that's going and thankfully it was in the (laughs) carry-on and um yeah so I just was forced into learning how to use it and I've never looked back it's It's been such a great change for me and it's been just really good for the health of my body I find yeah I don't I don't know the science behind it but I am a much happier person during the, that time of the month now. Yeah. And I was thinking of that just because when I don't have access to, like I'm traveling home for the weekend to my parents' house or something, and I don't have any of my reusable supplies, um, mm-hmm. and I have to use disposable pads, it is yeah. like heartbreaking to go back to that and to have to like <laughs> resign yourself to throwing that like wad in the trash. You're just like, oh, what? yeah. What a heap of garbage that, like, to think, yeah, you don't really think about, like, going back to, like, old habits. Like, you've come so far at this point in your zero-waste life. When you go back and start, like, doing something that's really, really wasteful, and you're just like, oh, my goodness, like, how did I used to do this every single month? Like, what a waste. Yes, it's shocking. It, like, actually shocks you. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so that's another, like, tip is to, to try something for a really long time and then, like, to just... And then go back and to, see, like, oh, wow, no, this was a much better way. <laughs> yeah, 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 it really it's solidifies so true. it. It's the same thing with the diapers. Yeah, we were, we were like, oh, my God, I can't believe, like, some people do this all the time. I know. You know? Like, it's, uh, it's really eye-opening yeah. to go backwards <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> or even staying in Airbnbs, um, a lot, sometimes it was in people's houses, you know, and we'd open their fridge or open their pantry to put our things, and we, we'd be like, oh, my God, 
this is like what people's fridges look like. Yeah. Cramped packed with so many condiments and food and like when you go backwards you're like oh my goodness how do they manage yeah how do they finish all their food and everything when there's so much jam packed in there and all the packaging and (laughs) it's like it becomes a little bit overwhelming to go backwards Thanks again for listening, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this compilation of tips. Never forget that even when traveling or doing something out of the ordinary, every little change helps. All we have to do is plan ahead and be prepared. Talk to you soon, and if you're in Ontario, have a great long weekend. Bye.